Hello friends and other relations. This is uh, Jay Higg. Uh, welcome back to Surviving the Elements. And uh, today I'm going to show you a deck I built with a, the featured card being the Vulture. The Vulture card uh, is a card that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> in, uh, in true Vulture fashion, any time that a creature dies, whether it's on your side or on your opponent's side, um, the Vulture goes up. One, uh, one HP and one attack power, as you can as you can see on the card. It's a it's a scavenger. It thrives off of uh, the death and decay that is incident to the battleground. And in order to in order to make a deck featuring the vulture, I I went the classic route. This is like if you start with a death or an entropy deck, this is one of the first sorts of decks that you'll make. Purely and simply because it's so simple to make, and it takes advantage of what death does so well, um, which is amass corpses and feed off of them. <laughs> and so I've got vultures, I've got uh, bone walls. I, I didn't, I didn't have room for bone yards in here. I, I wanted to actually have some mummies, something with a big, a, more attack power. Um, but uh, in order to make enough death happening that I could take full advantage of it. I included five Schrodinger's cats, and uh, the Schrodinger's cat can die without dying. That's its power. It is uh, you can spend one entropy, and it will be a dead and alive. <laughs> it will be, you know, like like in the uh, thought experiment, the cat who is both dead and alive at the same time. In the box. Any hoozle. I, I don't trust this deck against anything better than a level 3, and uh, it probably isn't even all that reliable against a level 3, especially considering the fact that my opponent appears to be a Fire Darkness deck. But we're off to a good start with uh, a Soul Catcher and three Bone Pillars. The Soul Catcher gives me two Death Quanta every single time there's a death, again, taking advantage of all the dying. Okay, now Arsenic... I only have one arsenic. It might be better to have more than one. If you're building this deck yourself and you happen to have more than one arsenic. But arsenic's a great weapon. It only deals two damage, but it, it also deals a poison damage at the end of every turn. Every time it attacks. So that's a big plus, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and play the vulture. And then kill it. Now there are no amethyst pillars in this deck. So I'm relying entirely on the mark of entropy for my Entropy Quanta, which is fine because there's only five Entropy cards in the deck. Um, and I only need one cat, really, at a time. See, he just killed my Vulture, unfortunately. But there's more where that came from. And uh, Bone Wall is particularly effective, so... <laughs> that should hold them off for a while. I mean, Deflagration only takes care of... There, every time you play Bone Wall, you get seven walls. And that's quite nice. <laughs> and every time something dies, you get two more walls. And the only way for them to, to drill down... I mean, each wall blocks a hit from every player who hits it. No matter how much attack power they have. So bone, bone walls are one of the best cards in the game. And I wanted to take full advantage of that with this deck. Especially since he has Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit deals a lot of damage once he starts building up his Fire Quanta pool. Okay. He has destroyed every single creature I've played aside from my Schrodinger's Cat, which is kind of funny. Since so much of my strategy relies on the Schrodinger's Cat, but the AI is very bad at recognizing this fact. <laughs> okay. Vulture. I'm going to... Go and go ahead and infect the fire spirit. I probably don't have to, but it's not a bad idea. And I still have these two plague cards. Plague poisons every enemy creature. Oh, and it also removes invisibility. Oh, that's nice. So if he plays cloak, I can use plague and he'll. <laughs> no goodbye, cloak. <laughs> cloak is a darkness card, by the way. And since this is a fire darkness deck, there is a possibility that he has one. Okay. Play the mummy. One of the advantages of the mummy, not just because it has uh, the attack power, but um, if you're playing against a time deck, the reverse time card, instead of returning the mummy to the deck, as it does to most creatures, 
it turns it into a pharaoh, <laughs> a pharaoh card. And that's nice. You see how much the death quanta is building up? I only have like seven or eight bone pillars in this deck, but I don't need many more than that because I've got the soul catchers. And the soul catchers, even with just one of them, the quanta builds up, the, the quanta build up really quick so long as I keep killing things. Or so long as he keeps killing things. This 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 AI is helping me a lot more than he's hurting me. <laughs> oh, that was a quick game. That actually went better than even most of the trial runs I did before starting. <laughs> so yeah. Oh oh, let me take you back and show you the import code because I completely forgot to do that. I I always include the import code in the uh, in the description as well, but um, just in case you'd rather copy it down from here. <laughs> so yeah, that's the deck that I built, and uh, it's 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 not the best deck, but it is significantly better than the first deck of its kind that I built when I first started this game. So I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, thank you, friends and other relations, for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you go on a fun adventure, and I will see you anon. Bye bye.